that women in their early 40s are often still having normal menstrual cycles and physiologic shedding. So in that age group, Beck were showing frequently, even when there was no disease at all. So in the 2014 revision of the Bethesda criteria, that threshold was raised to the age of 45. Have you ever opened your pap smear report and seen the words benign appearing endometrial cells? What exactly does that mean? You're not alone. Many women get this exact result in panic because the words endometrial and cells sound serious. But here's the truth. It's not dangerous, but it does depend on your age and menopausal status. So today we're going to talk about what these cells really are, why labs only report them after the age of 45, and when they might be a clue that something deeper in the uterus deserves attention. Now, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. This helps me build my channel and reach a wider audience. So let's dive in. The endometrium is the inner lining of the uterus. Each month, if you're still having menstrual cycles, that lining thickens and prepares for possible pregnancy. And if pregnancy does not happen, it sheds during menstruation. Now, sometimes during the shedding process, a few of those cells migrate down the cervix and appear in the sample taken during a well woman exam pap smear. If those cells look normal under the microscope, not atypical, not precancerous, the lab will report them as benign appearing endometrial cells or BEC. So at its core, this phrase means normal looking uterine lining cells were found on the cervix sample. Originally, the 2001 Bethesda guidelines stated that benign endometrial cells should be reported in anyone aged 40 and over. But follow-up studies revealed that women in their early 40s are often still having normal menstrual cycles and physiologic shedding. So in that age group, Beck were showing frequently, even when there was no disease at all. So in the 2014 revision of the Bethesda criteria, that threshold was raised to the age of 45. Now, this adjustment made the test more specific for predicting meaningful pathology. By raising the test threshold, they were able to capture women and run additional tests on women who were more likely to have the disease as opposed to women who were less likely to have the disease, sparing them unnecessary tests and complications from those tests and workup. Beck are actually quite common. They do appear in up to 12% of pap cervical cytology tests overall. They're more frequent in premenopausal than in postmenopausal patients. So simply switching to newer technology made these cells show up more often, even when nothing abnormal was actually happening. When benign appearing endometrial cells appear on pap, they can reflect two possibilities. First, physiologic shedding. That's just normal shedding of the uterine lining. Combined data from two large studies found that endometrial cells are much more likely to appear in the first 10 to 12 days of the menstrual cycle. That's right after your period ends, with a prevalence of 21 to 24%. After day 12, the prevalence drops dramatically down to around 1 to 2% for the rest of the cycle. So timing matters. This is why the gynecologist will always ask you when your last menstrual cycle was. One of many reasons. If your pap was done early in your cycle, those benign cells are likely completely normal. Second would be a pathologic process, which includes endometrial hyperplasia or an abnormal growth of endometrial cells, such as can be seen in carcinoma or cancer. This is when the endometrial lining should not be shedding. There was a retrospective study of over 160 postmenopausal patients that showed those with benign endometrial cells had significantly higher rates of endometrial cancer and its precursors, even if they had no bleeding symptoms. Among women with postmenopausal bleeding, the rate of cancer or its precursors was around 16.4% compared with 10.9% in those without the benign appearing endometrial cells on their pap test. So in postmenopausal women, this finding always deserves further investigation. So what about premenopausal women? So this is supposed to be a natural appearing finding, especially in those who are still having regular menstrual cycles. The difference of benign appearing endometrial cells doesn't always mean it's a disease or pathology. Several studies reference around 30 
8 through 44 have found no consistent association between Beck and cancer in women who are still menstruating. For example, in one particular retrospective study, around 186 women aged 40 and over, you know, median age was 48, their menopausal status wasn't really specified, the rates of atypical endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial carcinoma were virtually identical in those with versus without Beck. So for most women in their 40s with regular cycles, Beck was usually not a warning sign and was likely representing the physiologic shedding of benign uterine cells. So how do doctors approach it? Here's how clinicians usually handle this. If you're under 45 and you're still having predictable cycles and your pap smear shows Beck or benign endometrial cells, often no further workup is needed. But if you're 45 and over, or your postmenopausal, your clinician might suggest additional tests. And this can start with a transvaginal ultrasound to measure the thickness of the endometrial lining. If the lining is thickened or if you're having abnormal bleeding, the next step would be an endometrial biopsy. Remember, the pap test does not examine the inside of the uterus. It only examines the cervix. It can only detect any cells from the uterus that made their way down to the cervix. So when we see endometrial cells, and someone who shouldn't be shedding, a postmenopausal woman, we will investigate to pap be safe. Smear, let's recap. If your pap smear mentions benign appearing endometrial cells, ask yourself three questions. Are you still having regular menstrual cycles? When in your cycle was a pap test performed? And are you 40 or 45 and older? Now your gynecologist is already going to be asking these questions and documenting this before that pap test is even created, so they'll already have the answers. If you're 45 or older or you're postmenopausal, talk with your provider about additional tests and which ones are applicable to you. That doesn't mean that the doctor expects cancer and you shouldn't be worried about cancer because there's many precursors before actual full-blown cancer happens. But with regular pap smear testing, you're giving a chance to your gynecologist to try to capture this early and intervene. Your pap test is one of the simplest and most powerful tools in preventive women health. If you like this material, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me. I'm here to make the medicine make sense. Until next time.